So I met Martin approximately five years ago at a job fair that I was volunteering for. I was somebody helping others uh, with their resumes. Martin came up to me having Jeffrey Dahmer style classes, asking a lot of questions and not giving me much information to work with. So as I talked with him a little bit further, I learned that Martin was a single father, had recently moved here from California. He was looking to Arizona for this new life and this new ability to start fresh. Um, his children were growing. He had a bachelor's in fine arts, or as he referred to it, a bachelor in fine unemployment. <laughs> as a substitute teacher for 20 years, he did what he needed to do to support his family. He came to Arizona again to look for new opportunities. As we began the talk, as an artist, um, I asked him, what did you want to go back to school for? And he said, I want to do something conventional. I want to do something that I can rely on. And then we get off on a tangent, and we talk about the oil spill. We talk about the public transportation system in Phoenix and how lousy it was. Then we come back to the conversation. He said, you know what? I think I'm going to do accounting. <laughs> so during that period of time, Martin would periodically pop in to, to Glendale Community College, stop by my office, and we'd have conversations until the middle of the night. Well, middle of the night, maybe it's a little bit extreme. But the janitors would end up coming in and saying, why are you guys still here? <laughs> so during this entire time, I really learned something. Although we were 30 years different, we shared a common experience. He and I both had the same form of cancer as children. We both loved music, including Arlo Guthrie and the Beatles. After he finished his accounting program, he said, I want to do art. <laughs> Accounting's boring. So he ended up pitching an idea of turf, uh, painting of Turf Paradise and pitching it to the CEO. The CEO said, nice picture, but we're not interested. So Martin then would go to different car dealers, sharing experiences of his art, hoping that somebody would give him the opportunity. He talked to me about his uh, experience uh, writing and drawing for popular mechanics. And then he'd give me the history of popular mechanics. As, some, as a non-car enthusiast, I just listened and smiled, nodded, and we continued the conversation. After he decided to do art, he said, I'm going to put my art on mugs and t-shirts. All right, mugs and t-shirts. So he developed a business plan and he worked with many people to develop a website. And he was very energetic. Still didn't really have a good full-time job. In fact, I think he was working part-time at Walmart. One day he came in and I was asking him how his art project was going. He said, you know what, my arm is sore. So it's hard to be an artist when you have your arm is sore, particularly your right hand. So shortly after, um, I encouraged him to go to the doctor along with many of his friends. He was sick. Without medical insurance, that temptation to go to the doctor is often outweighed by the cost. So what we found, cancer. In an artist whose predominant hand was a right hand. Prognosis was not good. And my wife works in the medical field with cancer. We'd have conversations with the market about it. It was not a positive thing. So during this time, he was initially very upset, as we all are. And he said, you know what? I'm going to go on. I'm going to look at as many different treatments as possible. I'm going to beat this. I beat it before. I'm going to beat it again. So even going to the point of drawing with his left hand, and posting it outside his chemo door. Still constantly marketing, looking for an opportunity. <laughs> so Martin ended up um, continuing to fight cancer. He came into my office um, one day and, and wanted to just sit down and talk. The cancer was not going into remission. In fact, it was accelerating. And the opportunity to do anything about it was non-existent. So he came into my office, at the, and, and my biggest regret is I had a meeting scheduled for shortly before he got there. And I said, I'm sorry, Mark, I'm going to have to finish this conversation. I need to go to a meeting. It's important. I can't be late. Three weeks later, I got a uh, saw on Facebook that he had passed away. And I started to go back in my mind and say, 
could I really have spent a few more minutes talking with him? So, lessons learned is always be present. Appreciate the art of life. Science will ultimately determine your quantity of life, but it's the quality. So be present, be authentic, and learn to laugh and have fun. Thank you.